Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 19th of December. Today we don't have much updates from the ground, but today we have a lot of updates uh, from, from the special operation, could we might say. And the most important updates are coming from the territory of Belarus, if you remember, a few days ago I told you that the President of Russian Federation were planning to visit uh, Belarus on the 19th of December and today uh, he visited this country and uh, furthermore, as we discussed, not just the President of Russian Federation visited Belarus, also the Minister of Defense Shoigu visited this country and the Minister of Foreign Affairs Lavrov, so three the most powerful persons of Russian Federation today the visited Republic of Belarus and of course it is very important to understand what these guys are planning to sign or discuss or something like this to tell the truth it's like uh, some kind of secret nobody knows and I believe that we won't be able to find out this thing Me, you know, we will be able to understand maybe in the months Let's say if the uh, Russians attacks the territory of Ukraine from the territory of Belarus, I believe only in this case we will be able to understand what these guys uh, discusses today, these hours in the capital of Belarus in Minsk. But if we are talking about the Western sources today, at least we received two two uh, like uh, ideas possible. Uh, things that uh, are happening these days in Minsk, what kind of agreements they're signing. First of all, uh, some Western sources are saying that the president of Belarus and president of Russian Federation Putin uh, discussed the plans of deployment of two big military bases on the territory of Republic of Belarus. The first base the Russians are planning to establish somewhere in the south near Gomel. I'm marking this, uh, I'm creating this polygon softly, uh, just near Gomel, uh, like on the north from Kiev, and the second base the Russians want to establish on the west part of Belarus, somewhere near Grodna. So it's like approximately, but just to understand where the Russians might want to establish their bases and this is like the topic they're planning to discuss furthermore some uh, western sources added adds that maybe not just the bases the russians are planning to establish but also to deploy some kind of nuclear rockets uh, nuclear missiles on the territory of belarus just like to be on the safe side of course to short the distance between let's say uh, the Russian nuclear missiles and the capitals of Western Europe or so something like this and uh, today during the day uh, just somewhere in the evening we got another report from some Western analytics that according to their information Poland are planning to deploy or to enter Ukraine somewhere around 20 on the 27th of March so according to the Western sources uh, the Poland forces, the Poland army, plans to enter Ukraine, the western part of Ukraine, somewhere around 27th of March of 2023. So, uh, somewhere less than, uh, somewhere in three months, I believe. Uh, exactly as the winter ends, and exactly at the time when there uh, will be no problems to use fields, to use roads, to the, that the Poland forces won't, um, face the same problems as the Russians faced in the February when they were stuck in the mood on over over the Ukraine. So they want to think when this time passes and after that the Poland will try to enter Ukraine. Maybe they have some on their own calculation, their own projections. Maybe by that time the Ukrainian army will be collapsed or reduced heavily and the Ukrainians will be forced to step back and so and this is the best time to to start some kind of rescue mission to rescue at least the western part of Ukraine from the Russians or something like this. Who knows? But I believe that all these things like establishing bases, like uh, upcoming greatest offensive operation of the Russians, like uh, rumors about entering uh, the western part of Ukraine from Poland somewhere in March of 2023, all these things are the pictures, are the stories of the same picture. Maybe all these things are some kind of bluff. Who knows? But anyway, it's just a game and the party has just decided to raise the stakes. Who knows? 
Uh, if we are talking about the situation on the ground, there were no changes during the day, very heavy clashes, just a few important updates, but they are very important, so let's discuss them. First of all, let's discuss start from the Kupin's Kliman front line. As you can see, there are same picture, the Ukrainians stopped any attempts of counter-offensive operation in this area. They're, now they're in completely defense state, trying to stop the Russians and not to allow them to take the territory back. And if we're talking about Kupin's Kliman front line, during the 24 hours the Ukrainians lost around 90 soldiers and something around 7 armored vehicles. To be more precise, near Kupins they lost around 20 and around Liman they lost around 70 soldiers. If we are moving to Donetsk, uh, on this front line we received a lot of interesting updates. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours the Ukrainians lost around 130 soldiers and something around 8 armored vehicles. As you can see, the losses are very high during the previous 24 hours. Uh, the clashes along the front lines are very heavy. There are very heavy clashes in Sporna. The Russians, uh, after they got control over Yakovlevka and Bilokorovka, they need to short the front line and to get somehow to Vyimka and they attacked this bridgehead from many sides, trying to force the Ukrainians to step back. But till today, the Ukrainians are, are able and they're still able to hold the, their position near Sporne. There are very heavy losses from the Ukrainian side, but they're at least for now they're not planning to step back. If we're talking about Bakhmut, the Russian sources map has been a little bit updated, at least they have updated the gray zone, the area between these gray dots and the green dots. As you can see, the Russians involved um, deeper inside the residential area of the eastern part of Bakhmut. There are very heavy clashes there, but no more prog progress. Very interesting updates today we received from uh, the north of Bakhmut. If you remember, a few days ago we received an update that Ukrainian destroyed this bridge, and later, a few days later, we got another update that Ukrainian destroyed another bridge. But today we have some kind of clarification of this situation, and uh, the thing is that Ukrainian destroyed just one bridge, the middle one, this one, and the second explosion was to clear the area. So there were a lot of ruins in this area, and the Ukrainians decided to blow this area one more time just to clear the ruins. And the question is why the Ukrainians decided to destroy this bridge because if we take a look at the western sources map we're gonna see that this bridge is a railroad bridge this one the right one and this bridge leads exactly to uh, Solidar and according to this map this bridge uh, this railroad ends somewhere in Solidar so the question is why the Ukrainians decided to destroy this bridge because um, uh, something like in I don't understand at least I didn't understand this in this morning but later I tried to analyze this map between Solidar and uh, let's say LPR and so on and I find out that there is a railroad that connects Solidar and Papasnaya this Papasna and there is, um, as you can see, according to this map, uh, there is um, there is like small cross uh, that and uh, we don't see the railroad on this map because this is a very uh, old railroad. But believe me, the Russians are able to use this uh, railroad using the not the electricity engine uh, rail um, uh, trains and so on. And if we turn to the to the Russian sources map, this Solidar and this is the railroad. As you can see, this railroad moves from Solidar and then it goes to Popasne. So I believe that, uh, furthermore, during the previous months, we received update. Uh, as soon as the Russians got control of Popasne, first they announced that they are not planning to restore Popasne because this town was reduced to ruins. And somewhere two or three weeks ago, we received an update that the Russians are planning to restore Popasne, at least the part with the railroad station, because the Russians are planning to use the railroad and if we take a look at the Western sources map uh, we understand that Pasna is really important and maybe the Russians are planning to take control over Solidar and of course after that it will be very easy for them to move some trains to move some reinforcement as close as possible to the front line and maybe using Popast and Solidar the Russians uh, of course with help of this they would be able to move their rail uh, their trains inside of Bakhmut as well uh, it's very important because I'm not. I don't think, and nobody thinks that the Russians are going to stop after Bakhmut. They will try to develop, and of course, in this case, they need to short the front line. They need to solve the 
uh, logistic issues and of course to support the uh, frontline town with uh, using the railroads is the best they can do in this special operation uh, to develop to increase the pressure on the Kramatorsk Slavyansk uh, uh, agglomerations and something like this uh, furthermore, if we are talking about Bakhmut, the Ukrainians made few counter-offensive operations in the direction of Klishevka. Furthermore, uh, the Ukrainians accumulates and collects a very powerful fist on the line near Chesofyar, and these days they are planning to return control over Krudumovka and Zaryanovka. These towns are very important. I don't know why did they lost these towns in the past. Why didn't? Why couldn't they hold this area? Because now they need to return. The Russians prepare some fortification there these towns are under, um, under Russian control I believe they for the more than two weeks and I believe that they have already prepared everything they need to start to stop any Ukrainian pressure furthermore if we take a look at deployment map the Ukrainians deployed another 128 mountain assault brigade in this area this is a very fresh update so as you can see the ukrainians move more and more army more and more brigades on this front line and it's like overpopulated front line there are so many ukrainian forces in this area i can't even tell you the real number i believe that the there are more than 30 maybe 40 000 of ukrainian soldiers just on this front line they're like and uh, we I understand that if we're talking about the Russians, there are less forces from the Russian side, uh, but uh, the Russian storm, so it's something like I can understand that the Russians has less forces, but they're storming the Ukrainian position. Uh, now the Ukrainians, as we discussed, most of these icons are very fresh forces. They just finished the rotation process. And I believe that even in this year, we are going to see some kind of counter-offensive operation from the Ukrainian side, where they will try to push the Russians back from the line of Kurdumovka Azarianovka. So battle for Kurdumovka Azarianovka maybe will be more important than the battle for Bakhmut because from Kurdumovka Azarianovka the Russians are able to develop their offensive operation in the direction of Chasov Yara, Katsnatinovka, Taretsk and if the Ukrainians are able to push the Russians will be forced to establish their bridgehead on that side of this uh, canal and of course uh, it will take months says, or maybe weeks before the russians will be able to get back so that's why they need to protect this area no matter the price they are going to pay furthermore today the russians reported about some kind of uh, activation between Taretsk agglomeration and Gorlovka. The Ukrainians made another offensive operation in the direction of Gorlovka, but that attack were repulsed by the russians and as i told you uh, the losses from on this front line uh, from Bakhmut to Avdiivka from the Ukrainian side was around 130 soldiers. A lot of clashes, a lot of interesting updates are coming from Pieski. The Ukrainians managed to move the reserves in this area as well, and now they started their own counteroffensive operation. The Ukrainians understand that uh, no matter the cost, no matter the losses, they need to. Now they need to uh, um, keep control over Nivolska and they need to return control over Vadiana and Oputna over this side uh, of um, of this river of these lakes reservoirs. As we know, Oputna is under Russian control, Vadiana half of Vadiana is under Russian control. So the Ukrainians made a uh, few counteroffensive operation and they were attacking, let's say, from the same town from Pirovamaisk in direction of Nivolska and uh, from uh, Pirvomaiske in direction of Vadiane, from Pirvomaiske or Nitailo in direction of Pieski. Uh, furthermore, I believe you saw an update about the Ukrainian helicopter uh, that were flying uh, along the front line, attacking the Russians, but then these they, there were a pair of helicopters, but then one of Ukrainian helicopters were shut down and he, he, he fell. On the north from PSQ front line. So there are very heavy clashes. The Russians are stopped or at least slowed down. For now, they are not able to develop any offensive operation because of uh, a lot of forces from the Ukrainian side. Uh, about Marinka today, we got like some kind of another confirmation, a video confirmation of the fact that the Russians have cleared, completely cleared the south part with the high buildings. Uh, be, and the Russians are saying that even if there is, if there are some territories, some blocks that are not still under Ukrainian control or are not cleared yet, it's like small building blocks on the west part of Marinka and the, and the heaviest part, the most fortified part, has been already cleared and now the Russians 
finishing this mining cooperation. Uh, but today nobody uh, gave any report about the fact that Marinka completely reliberated or returned. So for now I believe that yesterday information was some kind of speculation. Um, I, I'm not saying that Marinka is not taken, I'm just saying that it will take uh, more days I believe to complete the entire mission and to get the, uh, let's say, the eastern part of Grigoryevka, Georgievka or the north and south part of Krasnogorovka. If we're talking about the Ukrainians during the previous 48 hours, the Ukrainians made some counter offense, counter offensive operation from Pobeda uh, in direction of the south of Marinka and the Ukrainians were pretty successful. They forced the Russians to step back from this position and the, the Russians lost few important checkpoints in this area maybe even these farms i can't tell exactly but the russians are saying they didn't provide a lot of information they're just saying that the russians during the previous hours lost an important a checkpoint on the south of marinka between pobeda somewhere in triangle between pobeda marinka and let's say this uh, red zone somewhere in this area if we're talking about entire south uh, Donetsk area the ukrainians lost around 80 soldiers and something around five armored vehicles during the previous 24 hours the ukrainians made few attempts of counter-offensive operation near vrimivka tactical bridgehead near Nikol Polska, Vladimirovka, Salotka, Stepnoe, Novomikhailovka, Napavlovka. So there are very heavy clashes along the front line in, in this area as well, but without any progress for both sides. Very interesting updates are coming from the media sphere of Ukrainians. A lot of a lot of Ukrainian propagandists are saying that started at least started such kind of talks that uh, Bakhmut is not important. Uh, and um, all these uh, people are working for the Ukrainian authorities and uh, they're not saying anything without any approval from the Ukrainian authorities. So uh, a lot of Russian experts are saying that Ukrainians start to create some kind of spheres and to, to prepare this. They started the process of preparing of Ukrainians that the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from Bakhmut. They're saying that Bakhmut is not important, that Bakhmut is very difficult to protect, defend and, and more and something, something like this. So um, if uh, Ukrainian propagandists start talk like this, I believe that I believe that maybe the Ukrainians will try to hold Bakhmut till the end of the year and not to give the Russians this victory before the end of this year, not to give them like uh, reason to celebrate this victory. But I believe that if they are able to hold Bakhmut uh, till the end of the year, the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from Bakhmut in the uh, in the beginning of January. Maybe even the first numbers of January they will step back because, as you know, uh, the Russians uh, they have like Orthodox Christmas on the seventh, eighth of January and uh, starting from the 31st of January to the 8th of January there are very big holidays in the Russian Federation uh, so I believe that maybe even during this process the Ukrainians will step back while this all this I'm, I'm not saying that the, the Russian army is going to start uh, to have some holidays and not fight but I believe that maybe during this period of time uh, the Ukrainians will step back because the activity on the front line will be reduced during the holidays, during the a lot of these family things, because all of these soldiers have their family, and I believe that uh, it's nobody wants to die during the Christmas holidays. I believe it's like normal situation for both sides. So maybe during this period of time, the Ukrainians will step back from Bakhmut if they are able to hold this town till the. Uh, end of this year and that's it for today military summary channel reminds you to get the menu violence in ukraine thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon have a good day bye bye